you need to be very careful about how you behave around my son. Otherwise, kisu itaamua. She told me that. This is the shosh to your babies? Yes. Yes. And for six years, Lane, I took in so much. In fact, I knew all marriages are like that. I didn't think that someone just waking up and beating you up and breaking doors is abnormal because it's what I know. My parents were the people you go to to be your maid and the, the maid of honor the, in, in the yes. churches. But now, what used to happen behind closed doors was uh, my mother would be beaten for supporting us. She would be beaten for supporting her family, her, her extended family. She would be beaten for going to work. She would be beaten for not going to work. Literally everything was a trigger. Whether she did anything or Whether not. you did it or not, it was reason enough. Mm. Something made them that. Something triggers that. It is never about the child. It is never the child. It is you, the adult. Yeah. A uh, very good morning to you and a warm welcome to LNS Rebuilding. My name is Lynn Gugi. Guys, I will not lie. I've missed being outdoors for such a long time. And so when my guest told me, Lynn, Mimi ni konyeri nyahururu road, I was like, I'm coming all the way there. And I'm so happy to these guys at Altona Resort who gave us this beautiful place uh, to film. Guys, it's really nice and the people are so kind. The gentleman that put the set for us together was just so... he. He's like much welcome, you know, he's such a vibe. And also I couldn't wait to have this conversation with my guest today because I put out a questionnaire on my Instagram account and I asked people, do you actually believe physical abuse is a form of love? And the response was crazy. I'm going to be displaying a couple of them here on the screen. And the number of people that say, dear Lynn, that's it. It's actually a form of love. I was very, very surprised. So when one of our fans reached out to me and said, Lynn, I know someone who has battled the same, but she came out of it. I was like, could I just have a conversation with her? And that's why we are here today so that my guest can walk us through her story, how she came out of it and why she's so big, matters gentle parenting and why the thing of Nita Kuchapa, Ama, how we were beaten by our parents does not work anymore. I'm about to let her introduce herself, but guys, you know, as always, I came uh, with my, I drove the cars here at Wangwa Maridadi, Asanteni Sana, for all the support you keep giving Maridadi Motors. And just to remind you, we did a beautiful handover. Seeing you guys just purchase their cars makes me really happy. They can import for you if you want a car. You can do business with that car. And of course, they have a circle. There is also this beautiful, beautiful car wash place that you can also take your carpet in it was sparkling peleka mtoto driving school nikubalini nilipe easy bill so my people please go check out our people at maridadi and support them and of course to you guys now i'll stop saying the number of subscribers we have mume to jenga ile mvaya so asanteni sana and of course to my incredible team who traveled all the way with me to do this episode i appreciate you and now without further ado please allow me to let my guest today in introduce herself good morning good morning Chiyo. no it's not it's more. afternoon and i'm just i'm collaborating with you good morning you have been a, you have been a girl i'm girl yes <laughs> na kufana team <laughs> na kufana team hi we are filming this at one yes and i know i was supposed to be here at 10, at 10 yes. Pole sana. it's okay things happen in mm -hmm. but as always i'm happy i have maridadi mm -hmm. so thank you so much for having us okay you can start by introducing yourself okay yes uh so my name is njoki mambo yeah i'm a gentle parenting advocate i am a mother of three uh very beautiful babies yes. very awesome babies mm -hmm. Uh, I'm also a survivor of domestic violence, both in my childhood and in my adult, uh, adult life. I'm very big on uh, 
and I think this monster of domestic violence yeah. and what it is it's done to our society, what it has done to our children and what it has done to us mm -hmm. as um, as the current generation of adults. Yes. Yes. Okay, let me ask you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pose this challenge mm, okay. right here because okay. I went through your Facebook mm. and I was like, oh my God, your views mm. are so worth it. Mm. Have you ever been on someone's Facebook account and you just want to keep seeing the next post? Thank you you. Are so unapologetic. Okay. Have yes, you, I am. Have you always been that though? Have you no. always been outspoken? Uh, no, 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 no. In fact, um, I started this early 2022 mm -hmm. and there's a post about the, it's it's funny that you're asking about it yeah but there's a post i did on facebook and i said it took the death of one of my parents for me to be able to come out and talk about my trauma it, it one of them had to be out of the picture for you to talk about it. yes my father passed on in 2021 yeah. september and his passing on for me was, um, and I know I'm going to sound very sadistic right mm. now, but his passing on for me was both a loss and a gain. Mm. Okay? Because as a person, as a child, I felt like he had taken away so much from me as his daughter. Uh, as, as a human being and as a girl who you know loved her father I loved that man to mm -hmm. death yeah. his passing on felt like <sighs> a relief we can finally breathe you see because of my of my two parents he was the abusive one so from the onset I knew my father as a very abusive man, mm. drunk, abusive emotionally, physically, financially even to my mother and um, that did a number on me, mm. yes. It did a number on you. Yes. Allow me to take you back mm. because you've said you've been, I would love to call you now a survivor, yes, I am a survivor. Of, of abuse, yes. you know, both uh, in your uh, childhood mm -hmm. and your adulthood. Mm -hmm. From where you want to pick this conversation mm -hmm. out, mm -hmm. can you take us back now? Mm -hmm. Sorry guys, if you hear a bit of noises, we have some students swimming in Palachini. Mm -hmm. So if you could take us back now to life growing up, okay. in your own terms, mm -hmm. in your own words, mm -hmm. what have you been through? Mm -hmm. How did you get out of it mm -hmm. and why did you start confusing physical abuse in your adulthood mm -hmm. as a sign of love? Okay. Uh, so I come from a family that uh, back then was considered the ideal family. My parents were both teachers. Mm. We were doing well. F you know, from the outlook, from uh, you know, what the society saw, we were doing well. Mm -hmm. I was the, I was the uh, we, are, we are two. These are my brother, my elder brother, and yeah. then this me. Yes. So we weren't uh, the family you'd say that struggled through poverty. Mm. No. No. Both my parents were salaried. Mm -hmm. They were church leaders, community leaders. My parents were the people you go to to be your maid and the, the maid of honor the and in, in the yes. churches. Like, in fact, I think it's Jana. I wanted to do a write up and say about how every month. I would be a flower girl in a wedding, like twice a yeah. month, because my parents were that couple. Yeah, you know the power couple. They are both teachers, they are church leaders. But now, what used to happen behind closed doors was uh, one day we'd go to church, we'd be happy, and then uh, we'd go home, and then Dad after church would go drink. Mm -hmm. And then now he'd come back home and then he'd be like, ah, nilisikia uliku umeenda kuchukua loan. Then, whoa. My mother would be beaten for supporting us. She would be beaten for supporting her family, her, her extended family. She would be beaten for going to work. She would be beaten for not going to work. She would be beaten for not talking to the farm hand, mm. she would be beaten for talking to the farm hand. Mm. 
she would be beaten for not talking to her in-laws. She would be beaten for talking to them. Literally, everything was a trigger. Whether she did anything or Whether not. you did it or not, it was reason enough. Mm. And um, unfortunately for my mother and us, uh, the extended family where my mother is married into, not my father's family, mm. they were enablers of the abuse. Because... I don't know whether it, this happened in, in other homes, mm. but my grandmother, who coincidentally was also a career woman, always felt like my mother being a career woman was a threat to my father's mm. position as the man of the house. Okay. Oh. You know, oh. Oh. it was, yeah, it was just horrible. So I can tell your mom's mother-in-law never liked her? Never. Never. In fact, if I can tell you a story of, I think I was in class four mm. or there about. So one day on a Saturday afternoon when my mom was washing clothes, Akenda Kwanika, she stepped on a nail. She was barefoot. So the nail went through her foot. And there was no one at home, it was just me and my mom. It so happened that the same afternoon my grandmother drove into the compound. And then my mother asked her, can you please help me get to the dispensary? My grandmother looked at her and told her, I, I do not carry, I, do, I, I can't carry rags like you in my car. This is someone who is bleeding. Okay? They literally, and you know back then, mm -hmm. there, weren't, there wasn't that, at a, let me call a car, or mm -hmm. it's either you look for a neighbor who has a car, or you know, just get some sort of yes. help. And she left her there. She left her there. So, um, home, huh? home wasn't what you'd want home to be. Mm -hmm. Because it got to a point where in the evenings, if I had my car, my father's car driving home, I'd just go to sleep. And not actually sleep. You just want to go and cover yourself so that you, you won't hear the commotion, you won't hear the insults mm -hmm. and everything. Mm. Now, what got to me was I couldn't really understand why my mother took it, in, took it all in so silently because my mother never fought back. Never. Never. Not a single slap, mm. not a single insult. She just took it all in. And that for me was was confusing because uh, as I grew up, I started to imagine, you know, maybe if you're not financially independent or maybe you're, you're an orphan, you don't have relatives, that would be reason enough mm -hmm. to, you know, to just sit yes. and, and take it in. But my mom was not that. She had a home to go back to. She had a career. She didn't even have like, you know, the kids you'd say that will burden you if you leave. You're just the two of us. Mm. I, I, I didn't understand that part until I think I was in Form 3. And one day I asked her just, why do you stay? Why, why do you stay? Her answer was, um, I made a vow in front of God and people that I would love your father for better for us and for that I will stick here hmm. Lynn if there was something that confused me start part it was that because how do you love someone like that how do you love someone like that how do you love someone who will embarrass you in front of your colleagues, in front of anybody who knows you? In front of your children. And then they want you to put on a very sober face when you go out. This man will come and tell you, there's a wedding next month and I want you, you we are going to be the, the, the best couple. And you just go along. How? What in the name of love are you even going to support in the name of being a best couple. You people don't even love each other. How, what is it? How, how, is, how does that What's work? This? What, what is happening? So for me, 
um, love was explained to me in pain. My idea of love, of what two people who love each other should be, was a very painful scenario. Solena is lost teeth. My mom has dentures not because of accidents or anything, the beatings. She lost her teeth. And I know she has lost more than I even know. Because to date, uh, mom says, tells me, if something happens in my life and I'm all chaos and everything, especially matters relationships, she tells me, I did not suffer 30 plus years for you to suffer. Mm. That is what my mother tells me. I can imagine where that is coming from. You, you hear her tell me that, and you can feel her, her, inner, her, her young self wishing she made better decisions. She tells me, Njoki, I do not care how many relationships you're going to be into, but the moment you smell abuse, get out. Get out. Mm -hmm. Get out. And uh, that coming from her mm -hmm. has been the basis of so many decisions for me. Because I look at my mom, I don't want to say I see strength because for me strength should not be something you derive from pain. It should not be. And I hate how we glorify pain and trans translate it to strength. It's not the same thing. I survived. I survived. I'm I made strong. it I You're shouldn't strong. have had to survive in the first you place. You never should have to survive. Life, especially in love, should not be a matter of survival. It should not be. So I, I look at my mom and I see a woman who has tried so much to hold herself together. together just so that her children yes could have better mm. or maybe could I don't know I don't know but I'll tell you this I've seen a glow in my mother in the last two years that I haven't seen in the last 30 the lady can eat, she can sleep, she can call me and tell me, Njoki, nakuja kwako. She's, she's, you know, you can, you can literally feel She's her. alive. She's alive. When she calls you and she laughs and she, you feel like, do you know, Lynn, my mother used to call me, no, when I, when I, when I moved out of home. Mm. My mom would, would call me and we would be in the middle of a story to Meshika Udaku. And then she would hear my father's car and tell me, Nika kwa ya Rusha, I'll call you tomorrow. Una And that, that's what it was even back then, growing up. The, my father's presence meant that your life stops existing as it was and starts being how he, he wants, wants it to be. It doesn't matter if you are with friends. Leni ungekuja kwetu, you would come at, at our place and then I would hear my father's kind tell you, Peter, your fence. Because me and you, we are both in trouble. For what? Because you came visiting. Nothing else. Muna leta kina nani kwa nyumba yangu. My mother was not even allowed to have associations with after the ladies who come to, to work on her farm. See? She was not allowed to have friends. Even her colleagues. You know the way my mamas have chamas? I've never seen my mother in a chama. She couldn't do that. Because chaos. Okay. So fast forward to when I was 17. Mm. So you know that time when you're choosing colleges mm. and universities? Mm. Hey, Mimi Lane, 
kungekuwa na option ya kwenda Uganda ama Tanzania for and then you sponsored by the government me would go I selected courses in universities in Mombasa in uh, Kakamega in Eldred in like I did not I didn't want to be anywhere yeah. that we can in kitu inaweza niambia niende home I I did not I did not want to be at a place where my father would call and say nakuja I did not So I got I I, I was placed in Moi University mm. in Eldred the main campus and I was elated people were celebrating because ah msichana amepata campus me was happy I'm going away finally finally I got my break Um and I don't know whether my parents noticed but first year yote miss kuenda home. Sikuwa yenda home. Hata second year people would break go for holidays and then back, back then eh? that was in 20, 2011 2011 2012. That was the time uh kulikuwa na clash programs. Mm. So most times we wouldn't even have those long holidays maybe it was just two weeks then you come back to school. Mimi I would bangaiza in Moi with the villagers just not to go home. And they would call me kwa nini ukuje nyumbani niko na soup. Niko na makeup stuff. Yeah, nafanya exam ya kasne kasne benya ta siku fanya. Like anything just not to go home. It was that bad. Mm just anything not to be yeah. oh. because i knew nitaenda and i'll come back with so much trauma sinika mm. etu let me just be in school so 2012 i was 21 yeah no 20 i was 20 in 2012 mm. and um It so happened I I went for my long holidays in uh, I think September mm-hmm. of that year. So I went home long holidays. Then in uh, early December I'm pregnant. So I'm at home. I'm pregnant. Na ukumbuke ni kwa nani umebebea mimba? My first my first uh, instinct was a boat. But then what if something goes wrong? What if you die? Death, death, death would, have been, would have been easy. Yeah, easy. Death would have been easy. Mm. Imagine going to a boat and then ugonjeke na huko uanze kuitaniwa your parents. What if it's not successful? What if it's not successful? <laughs> hey So uh, that whole December I didn't tell anybody. I just told one friend of mine she's called Esther. And uh, Esther told me now where we are more. Whatever you want to do with your life, I'll support you. Alafu mwenye anakuambia ataku support. It's a girl's girl. <laughs> I love that part. I, <laughs> no, I love that part for us and support you. I'll support. Ata kijiko ana. And she's there she's in yes. support you. So ata fadhali mimi nilikuwa nishaingia college eh. Mm-hmm. Ata your college ya ingia. She said I'll support you. So anyway, I decided to keep the baby. After uh, deliberations, nini 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 I decided. Uh. Either way, nitoe mimba am I keep it I'll still be in hot soup yes so we are, we are in let's do this so I broke the news via text I waited until January when my fungwa shule they both gone to school yes. they, to their workplaces and I texted them and I packed my clothes because I knew sasa hapa that's it I'm done for. And then I texted her, Esther and told her, so "You said you'll support me." Leo na lala kwenu. So, uh funny enough, my father texted back. 
He told me it's okay. He said it's okay. I'll come. We'll talk about this. But at the back of my mind, I knew um, the sober man and the drunk man are different. Two different people. So as much as he's telling me he'll come and we'll talk about it, I knew at some point it won't work. Something will just break. So he did come home and he brought me chicken and uh, started attending to my cravings. Along the line, uh, when I think I was around uh, seven months down, yeah. you know that time when your yes. belay is like this? Yeah. One day my dad comes home and he says, he comes home drunk at around three in the morning and he wakes me up. He, he, say, he goes like, you think umefanya kitu poa sana, you keep showing off your pregnancy to everybody. I'm just looking at him because I know now this, this, this is what I've been waiting for. It just took seven it months. It just took seven months. And then he goes all wild. And then you know with pregnancy and hormones, me know my pregnancy was kichwangu. Mm. So I'm just looking at him. At some point after he was, he, he, he rented for like 15 minutes or so, I just stood up and said I'm going to sleep. Now that was the cue for him to kuja sasa. <laughs> so this is me with my seven months pregnancy and a drunk strong man wanting to hit me to settle a score. Uh, so it, it went very nasty. Very nasty because I remember grabbing, I had a soda bo bottle in my room. I grabbed it and I told him, if I have to choose between you and my child, I will choose my child. And how, where was mom? Mom, at this point, she's frozen. Can't scream, can't defend me. She's just, she's frozen. Mm. So at, I think, you know, the way they say maternal instincts, uh, they, they, they like kick, kick in. I think that was it for me because I told him if I am going to have to choose between you and my child, I will choose my child. I do not care what happens to you, but me and this child, we are going to survive. At that point I'm holding a bottle. So that also, I think it shook him because I, 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 he, didn't, he didn't expect that. So he stepped back and asked me, so you want to kill me? I told him, yes, I will. I will kill you before you kill my child. And I think that for me and for him was an awakening. <laughs> because after that, hakuwa ijaribu anything. Ilibidi heshima idumu. And then now I went, I went very well. And then now I started pouring out. You know, all these years you've been... <laughs> it all came out. I poured and poured and poured. Threatened to scream because back then we were not even allowed to scream because we are going to embarrass him. He's done with beating us, but we are going to embarrass him if we scream. The following morning, I remember Niliamka uh, Nikapata, he had left for Nairobi and he had left me some 2K to go shop for the baby. Now, at that point, funny fact, fun fact, it I noticed Jambia baby daddy. Nikona ball. He doesn't know. So at that point I felt like my options were limited because once I have the baby then what? I need to go back to school and I also need to figure out how I'm going to raise this child. So that's when I decided to tell my baby daddy that uh, no, I'm expecting your child. Nee, 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 nee. 
And uh, he wasn't exactly receptive, but also he wasn't against it. So I decided to just go with the tide. Then again, he told me, he asked me if I was going to, to go back to, we were in the same campus. So he asked if I was going to go back to school. I told him yes, I will come back to school. So when time came for me to go back to school, I went back to school with my baby. Let me tell you something, Lynn. Before, you know, going back to school, my mom tried to convince me to either defer for like, uh, for like a semester or just leave the baby with her. And I refused. I refused, Lynn, because there was no way in hell that my child was going to go to grow the same way I did. There was no way I was going to subject my child to that. There was no way. I told my mom I do not care if I'm going to have to sleep on the streets or if I'm going to have to beg. But if my child is going to be traumatized, it will be a different trauma, not what I went through. No, not if I can help it. And um, so when I went back to college, <laughs> Bahati, like uh, Uzuri, my daughter came out looking like her father. Copyright. <laughs> There's no option here, Kuruka. Yeah. So um, he sees the child and he decides, okay, let me go home. Then we see what happens. So he goes home and the parents are happy. Oh, ni, 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 ni. That's how I got married. Ah. Yeah, my friend. Okay, and, uh, very fast. <laughs> <laughs> very fast. Because now here, there's a, there's, there's a reception I've had on the other side that I didn't have on this other side. It's new. Very new it's to me. It's beautiful. Very be feels very comforting. Yes. Secondly, remember I said my child is not going to grow in the same environment. Mm. Hey, these people look like they are nice people. So we go try life this yes. side. That is how Njoki went and got married. A king ya thadia, yani ni king ya thadia, ni lingi ya thadia, na nika ingi ya ndoa. To pay in Guinea, you a triple blessing. Now I experience different environments. Yes. Okay. And then now I go to a family who are... Um, so once they confirm their child, the child is theirs, they decided, okay, fine. So, uh, the parents on the other side are also uh, teachers. Yes. And uh, the man, the, the, the grandfather, the Baba Wawi Oboma, yeah. is a very passionate man. So he said, Sasa mtoto wa yenyewe, mmesha mpea miimba ndiwa meza. So we just educate her. Wow. Okay. So that's how my third year and fourth year was catered for. Maybe. Mm? And then now, after campus now, now you see I'm a wife. Yes. And I'm a daughter-in-law. Yes. I'm a sister-in-law. There's a type of way you have to align. Okay. So after after campus, I finished my fourth year in 2014, and I graduated in 2015. So all this time it was, you know, all fun and games. I'll be in school for two weeks, come home for like a week, two weeks, evo, evo, evo. Yeah. So the reality of marriage had not hit me, Vizuri. And this time we are living, we are living under the same roof with the, sorry, with the yeah, in-laws. In yes. So reality hit me when uh, now I'm home full time. Being home full time means your math, your your your, your being, a, your mom. Okay. And on top of that, you become literally the daughter-in-law. Literally, you do all the cooking, you do all the washing, you do all the everything. 
And then on top of that now, this guy starts discovering ah, kumbe bibi ukaliwa. Okay. So the abuse started there. And then I was so eager to please this family so that they don't do me the way my family did me. So mimi hata mkikuja mnibwagie nguo hapo like laundry for the whole week for one, two, three, four, five grown-ups and a baby. I'll do it. Tasugua. Because I don't want you to do me the way I was done. If you tell me to go cook uh, for, for, you have visitors, you, the extended family is coming, you, ni, 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 mm. and they need someone to cook, I will go cook. My mommy would go, uko, uko, usha go. Christmas time, I would go make chapels at a unga kama nepeke angu. I want you to accept me. I want you to love I me. I want you to love me. And I think I have to labor through so that you love me. I need to prove to you that I am worth. I need to prove to you that you know I'm a good person. And for 6 years Lynn, I took in so much. I took in physical beatings. I took in financial abuse, a lot, a lot of emotional abuse. I became suicidal, not even became suicidal, I attempted suicide I think around four times. And all this time, I don't feel like I can tell my folks what you're going through because what will they do? It's what they've been doing. So this is the normal. In fact, I knew that all marriages are like that. Mimi, I didn't think there was anything abnormal about that. Lynn, I didn't think that uh, someone just waking up and beating you up and breaking doors is abnormal because it's what I know. It's what I know marriage to be. It's any it was it was just you know it's normal this is what happens there was a lot happened in that marriage a lot a lot some some of some of which five years later I'm still processing processing trying to pull myself out of and uh Again, you remember Esther? Yeah. Esther is the same lady who pulled me out of that situation. Because when I felt like, no, you know, I'm done for. The only thing now I can do is, you know, just die. At this point now, I, I have my daughter and I have a son. Because... <laughs> My mother-in-law back then when I would complain about the abuse and you know the the manipulation and everything she told me you know uh, you as the woman are solely responsible for how your man behaves okay so I would advise you if you want this guy to settle down Get a second baby. Ah, 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 come on. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, now there'll be the story of, well, I don't think at how are we to, they've always been this good. To be, we've nurtured them to be. Namonam, kendi o kujenga bomo. Where are you to jenga bomo ya kwa moyo bomo? Hey, hey, ah, hey. My friend, me moyo. 2017, I have my son. To keep a man. To keep a man. That was not even planned, by the way. I went toward my family, family planning. I didn't even tell him. I just want to get pregnant so that he settles. Okay. And then I thought, ah, Sieta, my mom has two kids, so...
in 2018, Esther, Esther got married in 2018. Yeah. I want you to see how, how patterns repeat themselves in life. You remember the way I, I told you my parents were the ideal couple, you know, power the couple. Best like, man, best. Don't tell yeah. me you were Esther's. Hey, sh Esther called me and asked me, Joki, Niaji Mama Fiti. And then when she had come to my place, she had seen, you know, the way I live, my mm. house is beautiful. I had a very beautiful home. You are loved. Aish. So she would come and see my place and she'd be like, hey, me, I want your life. Inwardly, I'm like, no, you don't. So she comes me and tells me, As you, get namza yawako, you, you people be my best couple. You're telling me to be your best couple. We'll wake up at, at 3 a.m. to go smoke weed and then come wake me up and beat me up. That is the person you want to be your best couple. Of course, I, I didn't tell her. In, but your, just, in your head? In now. my mind. I'm like, Z, I wish you knew. Hey, Z, I'm not going to do that. So I just told her politely, no, he's not the kind of guy to be your best. That. No, I just told him, my guy. Doesn't like those things. How we make excuses. I know. But I told her, if you want, I can be in your lineup. Yes. But I can't be with my guy. What I was looking for was an escape from my reality. Because I knew she was in Nairobi. I was in Kericho. So I knew to be in her lineup, of course, Nazila weekly meetings, you know, shopping, nini, nini. so I'd have time to move to escape. Not, not to move from the marriage. No, like, like to, to move just have for a, a break. Bit. Just go. Just go. And I went. And we had the wedding, very beautiful wedding. Mimi bado kwangu kumeungua. In 2019, on 17th February, which is my birthday, Aww. yeah, it was on a Sunday, I remember. So at this point, we are having so many issues. So many issues. Mara umepigwa, mara sijui, nini, nini, it's just chaos. The mother used to work in a school in Eldoret. Mm -hmm. So she mm -hmm. called us and told us, uh, see, Sunday, you guys come and don't bring the kids. Just come, the two of you. Nah, don't even drive. Just take a mat and then I'll give you my car to go back with. Just come and have lunch, we talk. That day is very important for me because that was when I decided, Njoki, you can't do this anymore. So we went, took lunch. And then, of course, he's left in the house with the father. The mother tells me, oh, come, i show you around. So I go. So we go like this, the house, to Metoka, to Metoka Evo. Just when we're at the veranda, the mother tells me, you need to be very careful about how you behave around my son. Otherwise, Kisu itaamua. She told me that. Kisu. Kisu itaamua. Kisu like watakukata kata or kisu I'll be me. killed. He'll be killed. Yes. Oh God. Ah. I remember looking at her and being very confused and trying to make sense of wait, what did you just say? Then she repeated it. Eh, mimi najua kijana yangu. Na usipojichunga, kisu itaamua. Wa? This is the show sh to your baby. Yes. 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 I don't even think I, I made conversation at, after that. I don't remember well, but I think I was just, you know, zombie like you you're just moving around and you're wondering like really what is happening? What's going on? So we got, we got from the place, we were given his mother's car to drive back with. Took a drive back to Kericho, like a few kilometers into Kericho town, there was a Caprimi Ilikwambeleetu. So this guy, I think all, the, all this time he's trying, to, he's trying to make conversation with me, but me, I'm so, Nico so zoomed out because, what, what did, did I, I just, just hear? hear? Like, what? You know? So he keeps telling me, he, he asked me, Ile gari kombele unajua ni ya nani? I tell him, we used to have a car wash. 
in town in Kericho yeah. town so i tell i look and i'm like i i know this vehicle senior ule madam kikuyu who does this 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 is and he asks me do you know her husband i told her no i told him no i don't i i don't think i know him and then he goes on to tell me the way the couple now that couple has domestic issues they keep fighting and the lady keeps uh taking this guy to the police like ujama wana fungwa because of that and then he said mimi ukiwa inifungisha nikitoka natoka na wewe ha nishaambiwa kisu itaamua no you are telling me if i dare report what you've been doing to me ukitoka na natoka na wewe Lean up oh I knew hey madam this is it hata kama ujipendi penda watoto wako yeah. because what will what, what will become of my kids if I'm killed what happens to them and this time your mind is not registering i can walk in a police station and file niuliwe nikufe hata do you think of a police station at that time so sir, first of all i want you to imagine that you're married somewhere you are a foreign affair far from home very far from home which was very intentional by the you remember me telling you i wanted to be very far from home again the family you're married into they grew they have you. they have a position in the society oh, God. so our police unaenda kuambia ni watu wapo and they groomed you nicely proper they have you right here Hapa. i remember that day i wasn't even taken home when you took a to town i was told where jipange and then he didn't come home for i think three days and then when he came home now it was vita for no reason that time i, I think it like me back around two weeks watoto wafunge shule Lynn I used to sit at night literally like this and wait for morning because I don't want to sleep he might come in and knew way Oh I didn't mention he used to have he used to drive a pro box by then Unaona pa kwa dashboard hapo ako kanini ka cabinet he started keeping knives Literally on literal knives like 4 5 6 nikiingia kwa gari nazimia kwa hapa kwa passenger side naziona This after ni miambo kisu itaamua. Ndio hizi visi. Hata si moja na si mbili na si tatu. So I I wouldn't even sleep because na nikilala nikuja ni dongo hizo. Lean I waited for schools to close. You know the way you said you people say they are waiting for Jesus to come back. Me I was waiting for schools to close like that. The day my daughter closed school. That night I packed my clothes my kids clothes and nothing else asubuhi i called the guy who used to take my kid to school nikampigia sasa i'd like you to come and pick me uh nimepata job nairobi so i'm moving so he's like are you moving the funny chani no just that's how i walked out oh. esther 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 Ita imlin sina ta bob sina ta shilingi moja so i called my mom so okay ita im ita imia now ndio nikuje kupigwa hii mara ya mwisho so that i move out i talked to my parents and my ma- my father was very angry very angry <laughs> and i don't know I don't, i don't think he was justified to be angry because you know It's but anyway yeah but anyway and he said uh i don't care just come home but still lean even at my lowest i could not go, could home. Not go home i could not go home go home to what my mom yes 
she sent me, I think it was 8,000. Uh -huh. She sent me 8,000 shillings. 8K. 8K. That, I think that's the only money she had. Yeah. Then uh, I talked to Esther. I called Esther and I called Esther. I want out. So she loves it. she asked me out, out of what? Where? Like what I will bring me up to speed. So I told her. I can't tell you much right now, but I need you to know that. Now this is like the Leon Dionitoke Kesho. I told her I can't tell you much. But I'm at a place where if I do not get out of this house right now, then untani kujia to nikiwa maiti. So Esther I didn't actually say anything, she just told me what do you need. I told her I need a place to stay and I'm not going back home. So Esther went with she asked me Hakwa Melipwa. So she told me Mama, me I have I think she told me she has to be two K or something. I told her I have eight K. Now from where I am to Nyeri, I think I just need like maybe two K. So this 6k and your 2k, I'm sending you that 6k. When do you sort? Go find a place. I sent Esther my 6k. And because Esther, I, I tell people, I don't think there's anything that anybody would tell me about that lady that would make me feel some type of way about her. We are talking about keeping our tuna mawe uko. Me, I'll just pick stones and start beating them with her. Because she went, looked for a bed sitter, and called me and told you and told me you're sorted. Kesha was bima pema, get out. So I got out. Me, my two babies, and our clothes, and that's how we started rebuilding life. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, I did not see that coming. <laughs> That is how I started the Nchoki you see right now. That is how I took the initiative from living the Weishe Weishe moments of life to being really intentional about raising your kids. Raising me first. Yeah. Yeah. Then raising my kids. Because Lena was broken. I was broken. You know broken? I was bad. And I thank God for... You know, the, I, I've, I've watched you, your, your segments, Marakada, and you keep saying you don't have like a multitude of friends, but you have like one, two, three people. Three. Like these three. But Esther... And I want you to imagine, this is, this is early 2019 March. Yes. Esther just got married in December 2018. So literally, she's even putting her marriage at risk for taking me in. I didn't know her husband, like, her took to Mejuana before the wedding. Uh. We just met your time. But I thank God for this man. He's called Pastor Jojo. Jojo and Esther took me as I was and literally pissed me back. Small, small. These are people who would cook in the evening. Because Nilenda, I, I, I moved to the same estate they were living. Waki took a job, they'd call me Njoki. Mambo, poa, uko, home. We're picking you up and the kids, just shower. Not to take us to some fancy restaurant or anything, just to take us to their place, make sure we've eaten, we've showered, and then they'll take us back to sleep. We underestimate the importance of a shower during our broken moments. Yes. And then, you know, by then, me, I didn't even have a hot shower in my cupboard seat. I would go and soak myself in their bathroom and just stand there and cry and, you know, and then th I think they knew, they understand what was happening. Mm. So they would be the kids and making happy. I'm crying. 
in their new marriage. In their new, you can, I don't know whether you see that kind of sacrifice. Yes. These people don't even have kids yet. Now we'll show up in the care. Just do whatever you want to do with them. These people put us in their monthly budget. Oh. And Lynn, I'm not talking groceries and toiletries. I knew every Sunday I would be driven to church and back, me and my kids. And we're coming back from church, we'd go have some, like Nyamachoma somewhere, on their bill. Sometimes Jojo would just take the kids and tell, her, and tell Esther, go and watch Queen Joaquim like a place. And then we go and sit and laugh till it's like 1 a.m. in the night. Then we go back. You became like here. Yeah. Now I found yeah. the love. You know, the special kind of love, the nurturing kind of love, the soft kind of love that I had been looking for all this time. I found it with Esther and Jojo. And that, you know, the way I saw them treat me made me want to treat my kids like that. I, there was no doubt from the word go, I knew I love love my children yeah. but how I was loved was the only way I knew how to love so back then I was the uh, I was the tyrant like me I would ble beat my child Maka she went under the bed my firstborn and then she's not even crying she's just trembling his sister, one who told you, Mom, I can't get you water. I'm that one. <laughs> that one. That one. And then you were going to Facebook, and, my people. And then you saw me. Uh -huh. That child, like I said, she has been the, f my f my, my, the, she's been the first of my very many experiences. She's been my first in very many experiences. Because along your time, when, you know, when I was just very crumbled, yeah. I used to shout a lot. And then one day, I shouted at her and she told me, si wonge tu pole pole And you know, she's how old? Yeah. Five years old. No, imagine like a five-year-old child telling you, si wonge pole pole You know how that hits you? Wow. Like... She was five then. Five then. She tells me, why are you screaming? I can hear you. If you speak softly, I'll still hear you. So you're at a time when you're Julie, that why am I screaming? Mm -hmm. That child became my, my nurse. Oh. She's called Lavine. Lavine is my nurse. Because when no, when she started uh, like voicing, yes, what she, you know, what I was doing to her, I started to see myself in her. I started to see my child, my inner child in her. Yeah. I started seeing her as the child back then who wanted so, so, so much to be loved, to be handled gently, mm. to be nurtured. Mm. And here, at least her, she had the voice to say, like, you know, you're doing me wrong. Mm. Please do better. Mm. Coming from a place where my idea of what love is yeah. was very construed, yeah. very, you know, I decided now. We are not continuing this cycle. Yeah. Mm -mm. It has to end, and it has to end with me. So first thing, I sought counseling, I sought therapy. Because mm. I knew, I knew there was no way I would be better if I, you know, if I just carried on what I had in me. Because I'm lashing out at my children because of my broken marriage, because of the abuse I've gone through, because of my traumatic childhood. 
And for what? What have these kids done? What have they done? Literally nothing. And then I took myself back to that time when I suffered so much, yet I didn't do anything. To, to be, you know, to be, to be like the one who was the re, uh, receiver of all that abuse. Mm. I didn't do, I don't do anything to deserve that. So I decided, you know, these ones deserve better. Yeah. And the dad never came looking for you after you exited. He didn't follow up. He didn't call you. Actually, ah. he became a, a worse version than what I had imagined him. Mm to be okay and after I went through therapy and uh, everything after I was done dealing with my bitterness I tried reaching out not once not twice you know for the sake of the kids mm. and it's been heartbreak after heartbreak after heartbreak for me and the kids but we are currently working on a sort of relationship with the grandparents not with the father because Wale he's wakisu. yes no no the, no the yes, yes. Wakisu. Mm. the ma the father i've told you he has in fact after i walked out during that period when i was about to walk out the father was ilifka point the father got to a point and told me mama memo i would hate it for you to die in my hands if it has gotten to that point then just mm. I'm Come. setting you free mm. and he's been the one person in that family who has been very constant, constant. about you know like how are the kids he's the constant at a right now he's the one who pays their school fees their grandfather he's the one who pays their school fees Wow. he's the one who reaches out and you know I want to talk to the kids do the kids ask you about their father yes they do they do and uh, I've been very, I've, I've tried to be very honest with him because Lynn, what I won't do is I won't paint a saint and lie to my kids to protect his image. So what I do is if my son comes and tells me, can I talk to daddy? I tell him, yes, sure. Chukwa simu mpigie. And he will call. He will not pick up. He will not call back. I've let my kids experience their father's absenteeism. I do not tell them. You let them experience I let them experience. I've been very clear with my kids about the people you let in the people you know who just exist yes just because you share blood with someone does not mean you should tolerate mm. they are bs yeah they are bs against you you see, I tell my kids, the fact that I'm your mother does not give me the right to abuse you. If I abuse you, you have the right to go out there and look for the police or, you know, just report me to someone. Same way, if I am emotionally abusive to you, my children, you are within your rights to want mm -hmm. and claim better. So with their father, I tell them, and I've always told them, between a child and an adult, I am at a better place to make decisions. It should be me who takes the initiative to be with you, not the other way around. Children should never have to chase for love. Never. Never. I tell them, if you call someone today, and they don't mm. return your calls tomorrow. Simply, they are telling you, don't call me. Don't call me. I don't talk to you. It hurts. It's painful. I know. But then I'd rather that 
then I start telling them, I'm not sure your father went into the army and he, I won't do that. You won't lie. I won't lie to cover up another person's BS. Mm. I won't. Mm. I won't. And because there's plenty of people who genuinely love these kids for them, just for them being the kids they are. I don't see why I should complicate their understanding of what love should be. Okay? Because if I teach them that they need to run after their father's attention, I'm telling my daughter, even when she's grown and she has a boyfriend who is very unavailable, she has to run after it. Yes. I'm not doing that. How do you discipline them? How, do you beat them? Do you taku no. chapa? Do you? How do you discipline no. them? No, no. Uh, since 2020, the onset of COVID. Yeah. So that time we were very, we had to be indoors, all of us. So ni mvumiliane. So I started reading about gentle parenting, and I wanted to learn how to deal with my kids mm. without traumatizing them. So issues discipline, we sit down as a household. We have the do's and the don'ts. Like, no, I don't sit and come up with the rules. We sit down mm. with them. Mm. And I propose something and I ask them, are you okay with this? No, mom, can we do this? Bedtime is at 8 p.m. Are you okay with that? No, mom, can we make it uh, 8.30? Can we, can, you know, we negotiate. But kids are kids. They do break the rules. Mm. So instead of, no, ni takuchapa nini, 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 una nifanya nini, nini, nini. We have conversations. So usually, this one, one option is withdrawing privileges. Mm. Okay, so that because kids need to know their the choices have consequences. Yes. Okay, so we've talked about this. Uh, I'll give you an example again with Lavine. Yeah. She's a preteen, she's an early maturer. So there are times when I'm away on work engagements, I'll come home late. So she knows weekend or not, weekday or not, by 8, latest 8.30, sleep. So the times I'll come back home at 10 and the screen is still on, so you know. And my son sleeps very early, so yeah. it's not him. Yeah. And then when she hears me at the gate, very fast. So I observed that for like three times. So uh, I sat her down and asked her, love, have you been doing this and this? Have you been doing this and this? Have we talked about it? Yes. So I'm sorry, but for the next one month, no screen time. Because I've been giving you the freedom, but you're abusing that freedom. Yes. So you need to learn that. Choices you, have consequences. Yes. And I thank God because also, um, I wouldn't say my kids are exactly problematic. Mm. They are not. But again, hakuna mtoto uzali wakichwangumi. Something made them that. Something triggers that. And unless you do the groundwork to understand what is it? What is it? I've seen parents uh, say, ah, you, your kids are big. You don't know about tantrums in the supermarket. But we were there. We were there and I've never had meltdowns. <laughs> you say I we don't do that. Because one, if we are getting out to the uh, f uh, of the house to go shopping, we have a budget yes. that we've worked on yeah. with the kids. So by the time we go out, they know to end shopping ya nyumba. And then each of you has 500 shillings to themselves. Ikiisha, story ya kinder joy, mimi si uko. Yes. If you want your kinder joy, factor it in. Prioritize it. Hapo. Wukindonu nwe teddy bear. That's you. I'm not there. I'm not there. 
apart from you know learning letting them know that you know you can't have everything yes. i'm also telling them i'm also, I'm also teaching them financial discipline you have 500 to work with make it work prioritize what do you need make it work for you yeah so atam kiwapale you won't have meltdowns these are discussions you have beforehand the reason why you, you why you'll have a meltdown lean with a child in the supermarket is because they went to the supermarket. They want something. You don't have the money, but you have. They don't know that you have a budget you're working on. You are working with. Nam toto nim toto. They will want it. Mm. And if they don't get it, of course, there's going to be a reaction. Mm. Okay. Mm. But if you're able to condition your child, we are going swimming. Then after swimming, we'll have lunch. Yeah. Then after lunch, we'll go home. Okay, Hakuta kwa tantrums. Oh, I want to stay longer. No, we agreed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you've just reminded me. I'm doing a parenting forum, mm. and I would love you to oh. be on the panel discussion. Please, thank you. I thank want you. to invite people in, mm. and I feel like we really need you thank on you. the panel. I would be glad. Yeah. To. I'd be yeah. glad to. Yeah. It is never about the child. It is never the child. It is you, the adult. Yes. You need to analyze your behavior towards your child. Yeah. Towards other people that your child sees you associate with. Because Lynn today, if my son was here and he had me tell you, Lynn, when you umbo sana? Yes. Because uh, it's a normal thing. That's what grown ups do. Yeah. That's what people do. And I tell people, when I talk about gentle parenting, people imagine that you have to change your child. Your child, child has nothing to do with gentle parenting. Zero. It is you. You'll have to unlearn. Unlearn. Sana. Sana. You'll have to learn that instead of shouting, you sit down and take a sip of water and sink your emotions first. And be very rational about analyzing situations. Yes. Okay. Because if I shout at my child, I'm telling them that when people are angry, they shout, shout at, each at each other. other. So the more I shout, the more he shouts. The more I call him names, the more he learns names. Mm -hmm. Okay. The more I pinch, the more he learns how to pinch. Mm. So Kesha and Ashula, and then they, they, they have friction with friends. Mm. He will pinch and bite and beat because that's what happens when people are angry. Yes. Let me ask you. Uh, let me just take you a bit okay. back mm -hmm. to that part where someone confuses physical love, yes. la physical, physical phys abuse yes. with, with love. love. Yes. Where does it come from? Lynn, uh... I don't know whether it happened to you or to the, anyone in the audience, but I know it happened to me. Yeah. I would be beaten and I would be told, I'm not beating you. I'm beating the mistake out of you because I love you. And that used to happen even in schools. And I think <laughs> when I went to school, yes. we'd be made to say, Mwalimu hanichuki, anachuki ya makosa. True story. You know. True story. True story, yeah. Yes. So as a child, I'm being told someone who loves me can beat me to drive the makosa out of me. Okay? So even as a grown woman, I knew my husband is beating me because I'm on a makosa and yangu. But because he loves me, he's correcting me. Wow. That's it. The moment someone abuses you and they tell you that they do it because of love, that is where you get it twisted. Yeah. Love is not painful. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't break. Yes. Love reassures, it nurtures, it's a warm feeling, it's something beautiful. And there's no pain in, there's no beauty in pain. Mm. Hakuna, hakuna, hakuna. 
If somebody slaps you, they're not slapping you because they love you. They hate you. Actually, they hate you. They hate you. They hate you. Wana kudarau. Vibaya sana. Vibaya sana. The idea of someone has to be tough yeah. and physical with me for them to profess love. Go, go out there, be physical. Bring me, drive me a nininilete gari hapa ni ambuna nipenda. That is a physical gift. Uh, gift. Wacha kunipiga bana. Piga ukuta. Wee piga ukuta. Piguna na ukuta uko. <laughs> yeah. You know, go out there, do something nice for me. Tell me you did that because you love me. But don't beat me. Don't cause me pain. Don't cause me trauma. And tell me that you love me. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't. It doesn't work like yeah. that. And I think as a society, we have a very long way to go from disassociating the two. Love and pain. Because um, I could preach all I want to my kids. But if I take them to a school that believes in physical punishment. Wow. That's it. You see? What happens to that child? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. This is work we have to do from the ground up. I need to know that my child's teacher understands that love and pain cannot, cannot be in the same <laughs> sentence. Cannot be in the same. I've had situations where I've had to go to school and talk to the teacher and tell them, you know, my son is a very soft guy. Yeah. And uh, there's a day he came and told me, it was, I, I think it was issues with handwriting. And he was very scared. Yeah. I know they're not beaten, yeah. but that threat alone shook him. So, luckily, I'm, I'm friends with the director in the school and I went and talked to him. And in fact, I, he gave me a platform to talk to the teachers. Wow. You know, and he told, and we came to a consensus that watoto si mbuzi. Okay? The kids come to school because they don't know. Yes. Your job is to teach them. And if you want someone to learn, yeah. you do not force it. Okay? Masomo you nurture. Mtoto handwriting mbaya it is not intentional. Just teach the child how to hold their pencil, how to shape their letters, be patient yes. with them. They will learn. And you know, the human brain eh, is, uh, you know, especially for kids, it's like a no this open space. Yeah. What you pour in becomes their reality. Mm. So why not pour in yeah. gentle love? Why not pour in positivity? Why not pour in everything beautiful? Why are we so inclined to inflict, to pain. inflict pain? Why are we so inclined to condition our children to, under, to, to think that the only way they can be good people is, is if they go through pain? No. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's a whole, there needs to be a whole shift. Especially in our generation, because Lynn, I know I've had people come up to me, many people tell me, you know, what you talk about is what I went through, you know, or this is what I went through. The current generation of parents, and I know people will come at me for this, because the current generation of parents, a very, very high percentage of us are traumatized and we don't even know it. We don't even know it. And because we don't know it, yeah. or we know it and are, are not willing to acknowledge it and work on it, we're just passing on the trauma. Yeah. We're just completing, you're continuing the cycle. Which is why I say gentle parenting has nothing to do with the child. It is you. 
it is you who has to do the inner work. Yeah. Why am I a shouter? My mother shouted at me. So that's how I know. That's that, that's that's what I think is the best way to communicate mm. with my children. It's not. So you have to unlearn the shouting. Okay. Why do I pinch so much? Because I was pinched. Why do I slap? Why, do I, why am I so quick to slap? Because every time I'm turning a bigger glassy veil, why am I so quick to insult my child? Because I was insulted. Usually, some of this, you see, we say parenting has no manual. Mm. It actually does have a manual. It has a manual. It has a manual. Yeah. You learn. Just do the inner work. Have you thought of giving love a second chance? Yes, I'm open to love. Why not? Hey! <laughs> Not. Yes. Ah, I've uh, I've I've come through. I've I've been through the healing process. Mm -hmm. I've been I've come to a place where I'm able to see myself as Njoki. Yes. I'm able to see myself as Njoki who wants this, doesn't want this, tolerates this, can't tolerate this. I have become, I would say I'm currently the best version of myself. Ah, beautiful. I beautiful. am currently the best version of yeah. myself. Yeah. And I'm loving, loving yes. this era. Mm. And who doesn't want love? We all, and we are all deserving of love. Very deserving mm. of love. Mm. Very deserving of love. Yeah. And uh, I know, I think, you know, um, if 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 there's someone who's in the audience yes. who's been through the kind of BS we've been through, I've been through, I would say, heal yourself first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, heal yourself mm -hmm. first. Go for therapy if that's what you need. Walk away from situations that don't serve you. Water yourself. Nourish yourself. Identify with the inner person. Yeah. Heal that. Yeah. Only then can you be open and receptive of what the world mm. has to offer. Mm. Because it is true, you attract what you are. Broken attracts broken. Mm. Healed attracts healed. Love attracts love. Hate attracts hate. Yes. That's how it works. That's, That's how, how the how universe works. works. Right? That's a, because looking back in my when I got married, even before I moved in with the guy, I, I could see the brokenness. He also has his share of childhood trauma. I could see, but that is what I resonated with. You bonded over that trauma bonding. That is what I knew. Now I know better. And I know I would not even step a kilometer close to what mm. I experienced that time. Mm. Yes. There is a special person I know. I hope she watches. But if your mom would watch this, mm. what would you want her to know? So, mom, uh -huh. I love you from the depth of my heart. And I want you to know that while what you went through was painful, it wasn't in vain. You are the matriarch of a healed generation. And for that, I am grateful. I know my babies are grateful. They love you to be. They love their grandmother. And I've seen my mother transform. I see even the way she handles my kids and my brother's kids and you're like, you know, you know, you have such a beautiful smile. Oh, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> True story. Yeah, you, you too. You too. You are glowing. Oh, thank it you. shows someone mm. can see. Mm. Someone can see this is the healed version yes. of you. Someone yes. can see. Yes. Yeah. I, I think, I don't know. I, I, I really thank God. Because, you know, they, they say, the way you, you, your, your pain becomes your, you know, your story. And yes. 
I don't know. I think, you know, the way everything just happens for a reason. I've, I've talked to people, I've had conversations with people and their feedback, yeah. you're like, thank God. Thank you God for placing me in that, mm. in that capacity. Yeah. I've helped... I've helped people walk out of their marriages because if it's not working, bana, just go. Me, I don't want to be called and be told that you may vunjo me for you you may up. Just get out, bana. Life is good out here. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, and you'll find people who are deserving of you. People who will love you unconditionally. Yeah. People who look up to you and see beauty. But until you're willing to see that within yourself, you can't believe you have it. How is it? I just say like people should start living and mm. stop existing. Live. Stop, stop existing. existing. Yes. That's what I say. Please. It's been beautiful it's been awesome. having you. Coming all the way here has Thank been a you. blessing. Thank you. It's but been I'm awesome. not about to wind this up because mm -hmm. my challenge to you was mm. I feel I don't know, every time I meet someone and I see they deserve a podcast uh -huh. or they deserve a channel uh -huh. where they can blossom, mm -hmm. for me that has been my challenge okay. to you. Yes. And you said challenge you taken. open a channel. So challenge guys, if taken. there's any link you're seeing here, on, not the name, if there's a name you're seeing here on the screen, that's for her YouTube channel. Yes. She told me by the time we are done, she's going to do it. So I said, when I'm airing this, I'm going to put it there for you guys. So if you can see something, Harpo, it's her YouTube channel. will also be pinned on the comment section below. But I'm not about to let this end before I ask you. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you feel or you needed to touch on that you can briefly touch on before we wind up? I think I'll just talk about what I'm really passionate about, yes, please. which is uh, gentle parenting, yes. because in our society, if you look at our, especially the Kenyan context, yeah. there's a lot of BS going on, there's a lot of abuse going on. In form of? Discipline. Discipline. You, every day you wake up to a story where as we, a child was beaten until they have wounds. Uh, another day, we, you know, even killings. Yeah. yeah. We are losing souls. Innocent, beautiful souls. Yeah. In the name of discipline. And losing kids doesn't always mean the physical loss. It doesn't always mean death. Like I mentioned earlier, most of us are traumatized. We don't even know we are traumatized because the trauma happened at the onset of our lives. And that became our reality. And my challenge today is to every parent yeah. watching this episode, before you respond to your child's behavior, Take a moment to try and understand yeah. if you're indeed reacting to that or if you're reacting to your inner child. Because most of the times we are not even usually reacting to your makosa. Yes. We are reacting the way our parents reacted to yes. us. Before you shout down your child, before you insult them, before you slap them, pull yourself back, take a moment, yeah. understand if indeed what you're doing is to the child or to yourself. Mm. Okay? Food for thoughts. Analyze what happened to you. Come to terms with what happened to you. Please, please. Be the champion that ends the trauma cycle in your generations. Yes. And your generations will have you to thank for all their lives. Mm. And yes, gentle parenting works. It's not our Zungu thing. 
It works. It works. Mm. I've seen, there are actually people in our generation, parents who are current parents, and they come out and tell me, okay, it actually works. Me, I was never beaten. I was never insulted. And, and, and they've grown. They're good people. And, then and they're doing great. And you know, people say, oh, if you don't beat them, you're mm. spoiling yeah, them. Yeah, that spoil. <laughs> hey, Kwanza, you've reminded me. There's a TikTok I saw. A, t a parent has a rod with that Proverbs thing at inscribed. Spare the road, spoil eh. the child. So every time she beats the child, and I'm on your at a Bible in a sema. Do you know what you're doing? You're even causing religion, religious trauma on your child. Like, sasa, kwa nini nipende Biblia kama inasema ni chapu? Why would I do that? You know, stop inflicting trauma wow. on your children yes. in the name of discipline. Yes. And I say, Mimi Raspendi could me a discipline. Discipline is a term used in correctional facilities. Yeah. And homes are not correctional facilities. Yeah. They're not. A home is a place of love. Another thing I'll tell parents, your hands. And your mouth. These are the places your child looks for love. You hug them, you embrace them, you, you talk to them. If you use the same hands to hit and cast them. and curse, you're telling them that love can also be painful. Yes. Because if the same place I come for love is the same place that I get my trauma. That's it. You see why you need a podcast? Thank you. <laughs> you see why you need a channel? Yes. You see why we need more of you out there? Yes, thank because you. Because you're good at it. Thank you. And stop the imposter syndrome I was telling you skufe na hii gift no. niliambiwa hivyo pia skufe na hiyo gift kufa na now skufe challenge na taken now. challenge taken challenge taken and we will be here on the channel to support your work thank you and tell people when then you watch the video thank you thank you. Okay. thank you right yes thank you thank for you having too. us here mm -hmm. this has been beautiful it has been. i know on the socials i checked you out mm. njoki mambo yes on it's Instagram, Njoki Mambo. Njoki Mambo with platform. a H at the end. With a H. Yes. Mambo. Across. Or yes, Njoki Mambo. I tell, I tell yes. people Njoki Mambo and then they look at me like, yes, Mambo. Gina Kubo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Njoki Mambo, Gina Kubo. Yes. Yes. You know? So may God go before you. Amen. May people actually listen to your story mm. and learn something from it. Mm. You've really inspired me. You've actually made me think, what kind of a parent do I want to be? Mm. You've made me now start questioning mm. myself, mm. like, what kind of a parent do I want? And you've inspired so many people. People joke when I tell them, mm. our generation, the way you've said, mm. we are suffering from so much abuse. Yes. And we need to differentiate, even when you are talking to someone, mm. is that your inner child project? Yes. Heal, so you don't go inflicting pain and on you know people, innocent when people. When you tell people to heal, they feel like you're attacking them. But not see, attacking the, the you. thing is, we tell the truth nowadays. Yeah. And I love that whoever, you see, it's, it's a choice. Mm. Do you want to do you wanna take it or do you want to leave it? No one, you are not under duress. Mm. No one is putting a gun on you mm. to take this mm. message home. Mm. But it's the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. Yes. Hurt people. Hurt people. people. Healed people, healed, healed people. people. It's yes. just a simple, yes. right? Yes. So, acha nikimbie hapa sasa nyahururu. Mnaona niko na saa. This is how I'm rolling. <laughs> this is how I'm rolling, guys. Naona masa sasa ni ya kwenda hapa kuwafanyia inspire global. So, mkiniona tena na hizi viatu, this trouser na muone katop ndiyo kame change. Just no kibarua ni the same day. Yeah, so thank you so much, guys, for watching. And I hope you can start subscribing to her channel because I know she has it in her. And to the person that recommended me, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to mention your name. Should I mention her name? Yeah, one boy. Yes. Thank you so much for this recommendation. It's been beautiful. And I hope, guys, you've learned a lot from today's conversation. Hope your take home 
you can tell me what your take home is on the comment section and of course i want to say a big thank you to our partners at squeezing a filingi to niko home maridadi thank you so much by the way kinunua gari wende wapi like honestly support a girl I will. support a girl I will. you go to maridadi <laughs> get yourself a car they can import that for you and they have incredible incredible services their numbers are right here on the screen i love when i hear by the way, jokes aside I can even play this for you. When we went to do the handover for the guys that had bought the car, one woman walked in and she, she said she got a golf car and the reason she got it, it's because Maridadi had given out a car and she wanted to know that she's investing with people who care about other people in the society. You know who you are if you are watching. Thank you. That message was very important for me. I love working with impactful people. So my people at Maridadi are Santeni Sana. My team, Sijui ni wachukulia shoti ya muga zile vitu wana. Ache ni leo ni onyeshe behind the scene. Leo I'm thanking them live on camera. Amuga usitoe yo mawa kwa kichwa. So, <laughs> allow me to say thank you to my team. That's Muga right there. Thank you so much. And of course, Kola, thank you so much. And here is our man, Edgar. Thank you so much. Joshua is somewhere in that Maridadi car. There. He's somewhere sleeping inside. Yeah, and of course, this is the place we've shot. Thank you so much, uh, people at Altona Resort, for giving us this space. And to you guys for being incredible supporters of our work. Not forgetting Kevin and Sam for compiling this episode and making sure it reaches you guys right on time. See you on the next episode of LNS. Nataka nizifanyie inje. Mio kiti sayi likuwe menichokesha kidogo. So if you see me moving around, understand your girl needs to move. Nasijui homa inantakia nini. So if my voice is a bit, you know, husky hapa na pale, ni homa imekata kuenda. My name is Lynn. If you want to share your story, Story. The emails are right there. Info at lnn.digital or lin.ngugi at lnn.digital. It's been real. Tuonane kwa comment section. Nambarikiwe sana. Bye-bye.